I'm glad that Jesus Christ shed his blood for me. After all that music, I'll see if I can get this straight in my head. sing with me so if you guys want to come on up and I'll, I'll get this one here going and uh, just to quote the teenagers Jesus is sweet daughters would come up here to sing one for Dorothy and for the Lord. It's good to be saved. It's good to be in church on Friday night. Okay. Now don't hiccup, Alicia.
Amen. 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 Now, that's a blessing for to hear that. And uh, I'm glad to be here, glad to see you. And uh, I was looking for somebody here. I'm missing somebody. Uh, if you're like me, you're, you expect certain folks to be there and they're not, you're disappointed. Amen? But you remember, the Lord put you here for you to get a blessing for each one of you tonight. Now tonight, uh, I'm going to preach again to Christians. I'm going to preach to those folks that are saved. And uh, you're born again, and you're uh, washed in the blood of Jesus. I want you to take a piece of paper. How many got a piece of paper? Hold your hand up. How many got a piece of paper? Hold, put your hand up there, ways. All right, that's quite a few. Amen. All right. So I want you tonight to uh, take some notes, write down some things, and uh, put them in your heart and mind and soul, and meditate upon them. First of all, I want you to write down uh, five words. The lost art, this is what I want to preach on, I name my message because I want you to know right up from the very beginning what I'm trying to say. I don't want to come down to the end and you say, Oh, that's what he's trying to say. <laughs> so I want to start right up at the very beginning. I'm going to preach on the lost art of meditating. The lost art of meditating. Now, I want you to take your Bible and turn, first of all, to Psalms chapter 19. Psalms chapter 19. And in Psalms chapter 19, I want you to look at verse 14. Psalms 19, 14. Psalms chapter 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray this evening that you would uh, please uh, cleanse, cleanse my heart, wash it out, and make it clean, Father. And Lord, I pray that you'd just please fill me with the Holy Spirit. I pray that you'd give me clarity of mind. Lord, I pray that you would give me power from on high. And Lord, I pray that you would fill your people with the Holy Spirit and give them an open mind, an open heart of understanding, and that they can understand your word. And Lord, I pray that you would give them grace to be doers of the word. And Father, I pray that they would take this message to heart and apply it to their lives from day to day. Father, I just trust that you will speak to that heart tonight that must be spoken to. Lord, I pray that you would point it out to them, Father, and just... Help them see it personally, Father, for their own heart's sake and their own life's sake. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen. I'm going to preach on the lost art. Do you know when uh, years ago people would know how to do things and build things, and, and old timers would teak and they'd build chairs and build different things, and they wouldn't pass it down to their children, so it wouldn't get passed on. So nowadays, uh, a lot of folks don't know how to do things like them old timers used to do them. And I want to preach on the lost art of meditation. It seems to me like what's going on in America today is it's a lost art of meditating. In now take your Bible and turn to the book of Psalms and turn to Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. And uh, according to Psalms chapter 1, a Christian should meditate upon the Word of God. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Then the man that's going to be blessed is a man who will not walk in the counsel. The counsel is what? Advice coming from somebody else. Counsel is somebody else talking to you. Blessed is a man that won't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He won't listen to an unsaved man. Don't listen to unsaved people. Listen to God's preacher, listen to the book, but don't listen to what the unsaved people tell you. 
Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor setteth in the seat of the scornful. That's where those folks are scorning, laughing at it. Woe to the man that laughs at God's preacher. Woe to the man that laughs at this book. If those folk do that, don't you make them your friends. Now, verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doeth he what? Meditate. In his law doeth he meditate. What? Day. Now take your pen and underline it. Day and what? Night. What's he meditating in? He's meditating in the law. Then he's taking the Bible and he's taking the scripture and he's reading the scripture and then he's meditating on it. The Bible is a book of meditation. The Bible is not written like any book in all the world. The Bible's written for you to read a passage and then you take that passage of scripture and you meditate upon it. You say, what do you mean meditate? That means you just go around and you think about it. You think about it. And you think about it. He said, he said, the wages of sin is, uh, is death. What does that mean? The wages of sin is death. That means that every time I sin, I'm going to die. I'm going to eventually head in for death. And so every time I sin, I'm killing myself. It's suicide. You say, what is that? That's meditation. The Bible is a book for meditation. You say, what's that? Meditating is daydreaming. Daydreaming. Just, boy, you're in Tule Tule land. Well, it depends on what you're meditating on. Well, where are you, fella? You're way out there in left field. Well, it depends on what you're meditating on. Meditating is taking your Bible at night and reading four or five passages and saying, now, man, I ought to memorize that. And taking out your pencil and writing on it and writing on it and writing on it and writing. And saying, I, I want to memorize that verse. just like you did, brother. I want to memorize that verse. I want to memorize that verse. And then going to bed at night and laying down and going, oh. and then that verse come right to your mind. Meditating day and what? What did it say? Day and what? Night. Do you know what a lot of folks do? They meditate on everything else but God's book. Because they got all this other stuff coming into their mind. And they come into thoughts of their minds. And they lost the art of meditation. They lost it. Gone. The lost art of meditation is over and through with. Because you're meditating on something else. You're busy on trying to how to make a buck. Boy, I can make this buck. Well, I'll tell you, this is, this is a good way. I'll get this. And you go to bed at night and you think about how you're going to make a buck. And you get up in the morning and you're thinking how you make a buck. Money is what you're meditating on, bud. You ain't meditating on that book. Some folks, they just go around. And that's all they meditate is on something else that has to do with a whole bunch of stuff that never amounts to anything. He says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf also shall not wither. Now take your pen and underline the next statement. And whatsoever he doeth shall what? Prosper. It'll prosper. Whatever he does will prosper because he meditates in the Word. The Bible is a book of meditation given to you and me as well as all the saints back through the history and the ones to come. For you and me, brother, that's a book of meditation. What do you meditate on? Now, take your Bible again, but underline there in the passage. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I'll tell you how to make a mess of it. Just think about that thing instead of considering this thing with it. Right there. Think about that. Put that in with it. Because that right there will tell you how to, that thing, 
where it ought to be and how much emphasis you ought to put on it and how much it ought to be. And that's going to straighten that out. Now, take your Bible and turn to Joshua again. Turn to Joshua chapter 1. Turn to the book of Joshua. And turn to Joshua chapter 1. The lost art of meditation. Joshua chapter 1. And uh, let's pick up. Let's begin with verse uh, 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Now, take your pen. Underline some things in the verse. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law, this book of the law, what's that? That's the Bible. Shall not depart out of thy mouth. That means you put it in your brain anyway. But you also ought to put it down in your heart. You've got to get the Bible in your brain, brother. You've got to put the Bible in your head. You've got to memorize a verse. But then you've got to take it past your head. You've got to put it all the way down into your heart. Your head is not what you love. Your heart is what you love. You're going to tell your wife, I love you with all my head. She ain't going to buy it. I love you with all my what? Heart. Heart. Your heart is what you love. The heart is described what a man lays down on his bed at night and meditates in his heart. Now, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Turn back to Psalms. No, I didn't finish Joshua yet. This book of the law is not to depart out of my mouth, but thou shalt, underline the word in verse 8, meditate therein. What did he say again? Day. Meditate in the daytime on it. And meditate in what? The nighttime. Now you can get that right up there in the daytime, but you know what you have to do to get it down in your heart in the nighttime? You have to memorize it and say, Lord, it, I, I gotta have it, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. Lord, give it to me and lay down in bed at night and meditate upon what? The ball game? I don't care if the Indians lost or won. You know that? Because the Indians are not in Montana. <laughs> now in Montana, we don't know nothing about the Indians or the rest of them. Now, I take it back. A lot of guys in Montana, they got the ball game down flat, coming and going. Boy, they can tell you who won this year and this year. But I bet none of them can tell you who won the ball game five years ago. Who was playing in the World Series five years ago? Who cares who was playing in the World Series five years ago? <laughs> But who cares? I'm reading about something in that book that happened over 2,000 years ago. And it's just as good for me today as it was 2,000 years ago. And it'll save my heart right now. Now, 2,000 years ago, God wrote in the book and he wants me to meditate in it and he wants to keep my mind on it day and night to be successful. Jeremiah, uh, Joshua said, Shall meditate in day, or night, day and night, that thou mayest uh, observe and do according to all that is written therein, for then shalt thou make thy way, make thy way, take your pen and underline it in verse 8, make thy way what? What is the word again? Say it. Everybody say it. Prosperous. 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 You know what that means? That means you're going to prosper. That means you're going to be successful. You know, son, that don't mean nothing to you. You know that? But wait. If you was 19 years old, not better yet, you was 25 years old, and you couldn't read, you couldn't write, and you couldn't spell, and you was 25 years old, you couldn't read, you couldn't write, and you couldn't spell. And then God says, uh, memorize the book, memorize the book, memorize the book, then I'll make you prosperous and successful. And meditate upon it. I'll make you prosperous and successful. You know, that means a whole lot to me. How many of you here would say inside yourself, right now, if I was to personally ask you, regardless of what your past is, 
Can you do all kinds of stuff? Are you very, very talented and smart and, and very, very great and you can do it? Or how many of you would say, Ah, preacher, I don't think I can. Raise your hand. Please. Raise your hand. Put your hand up. There's one, two. Come on, folks. Three, four, five. I thought there'd be much more than that. Without him, I can do nothing. I trust the rest of you in your heart are depending upon God to do it. Don't you think just because you've got the ability to do things that you can do it? Because only God can do it. I want to be successful. You want to be successful. Then meditate upon God's book. All right. I want to preach on the lost art of meditation. Now take your Bible and turn to uh, Matthew. And I'm going to give you some causes. There's some causes of the lost art of meditation. The lost art of meditation. Take your Bible and turn to Matthew and turn to Matthew chapter 15. And uh, look in Matthew chapter 15 and see one of the causes of the lost art of meditation. Matthew chapter 15 and look at verse 8. These people draw nigh, nigh unto me with their mouths and honor me with their lips. But, now is it right to draw nigh to God with your mouth? Is that right to do that? Come on, folks, is it right to do that? You know it's right to do that. I ought to glorify God with my mouth. And you ought to glorify God with your mouth. I love Jesus Christ. You ought to say you love Jesus Christ with your mouth. You ought to draw close to him with your mouth. These people draw nigh. Now look at it. These people draw nigh unto me with their mouths and honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. So what is the cause of lost meditation? They think that just because it's here at the mouth and just because it is there that it's here too. It may be here. But that don't mean that it's down here. They draw nigh unto me with their mouths and honor me with their lips. And thank God you do. And I trust that in your heart, it's coming from your heart as well as from your mouth. They got to match each other. Take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And look what it says in verse 34. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can you be evil? Speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth speaketh. One verse said these people draw nigh unto me with their mouths and honor me with their lips. And the other verse says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Now wait a minute, those two contradict each other. So here's a Christian, and if he's not careful, his heart's somewhere else, and he's thinking, This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And really, his heart's not there at all. His heart's not there. His heart is altogether, it's this. Man, she's pretty. And she'll think I'm singing way out. <laughs> Man, she's, she's pretty, huh? Ah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. See, you know what's wrong? The mouth said one thing and the heart was saying another. They didn't match each other. And in Matthew chapter 12, in verse 34, it says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Then what's that? 
So when there's nobody to impress, there's nobody to, to wheel and deal, and there's nobody to convince, oh, in an art, unguarded moment, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will come. You know what it's like? Things get in the heart. And they get in there, and then if they're really there, when you're just not thinking about it, it'll roll up here like this and roll right up there and come right up to that tongue. And lots of times they'll come right through there and you'll see them. You know how you, you, know how you can tell a height when you get real, you're cutting, let's say you're hammering, and you're going bang, bang, bang. And this thumb here just seems to be a great big old uh, thing gets right in the way and you whack it. You whack it good with a hammer. You whack it, and it just goes... And about that time, what's in the heart is going to roll out. Yep, yep. It's going to roll out, because it's in the heart. Now, I've heard guys, Christians, sad to say, go, and I'll put a blank in there. Blank, 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 blank. It was in their heart. You know what I do? I just keep that heart as clean as I can possibly clean it. And just say, wash it, Lord, wash it. Wash my heart, keep it clean. Because I want to meditate in your book. I want to meditate upon those words that you won't be pleased with. Lord, let the medit words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. How can my words be acceptable in God's sight? And the meditation of my heart be acceptable in God's sight if I'm not meditating upon the Word and reading the Word and memorizing the Word. You know what causes the lost art of meditation? The heart don't match the mouth. You've never fell in love with God's book. You fell in love with something else besides God's book. Christian, you need to fall in love with God's book. I mean, fall in love with it where you get up in the morning, and you get up in the morning like somebody said about some Christian, he got up in the morning and that was his best time with the Lord. He'd go in there, and open up the book and pray and open up the book and just start reading down through there. And something inside him, I can imagine that Christian. I, don't even have to be right there with him. I can imagine him going in there and going, ha, 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 ha. There ought to be something right here. Ought to be something here. Ought to, ought to be something. Ought to be something. This ought to be a blessing right here. And just read right on there and, and get a blessing. Do you know this book is a book of meditation? How do you know that? Everybody right here, take your Bible right now in your hands like that. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Everybody take your Bible right there. Close your eyes and open up the Bible. And look at a verse. Look at a verse. I'm going to read. I'm going to read mine. Now I'm going to have Brother Martin read his. And Dennis, I'm going to have you read yours. And I said, "Go." And and I and he said, "Go." And he said, "Go." That's a capital G. And he said, "Go." I've already got it. And he said, "Go." I've already got a blessing. He can open up a verse, Brother Martin. Is that one verse? <laughs> That's one verse. That's a big verse. And it said, pray for us. <laughs> then we ought to be praying for each other. Amen? And he can go all day saying, I ought to pray for you folks. I ought to pray for you folks. I ought to pray for you folks. He can meditate on one verse in the Bible. Meditate. I ought to be praying for so-and-so. 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 That's a book of meditation. And it's a lost art of meditation. Dennis, read me the verse. The word of the Lord came unto me. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Lord, what'd you say? What'd you say, Lord? What'd you say? I know what you, you sent this book and for me to say it. Now, Lord, what'd you say? I can meditate on that all day long. Do you see what I'm saying? 
The lost arch of meditation is caused because God's people don't meditate on his book. Their heart somewhere else. Their heart somewhere else. Take your Bible and uh, turn to Jeremiah. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Turn to the verse. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 17 and pick up verse 9. Now watch what it says. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. Now take your pen and underline something. The heart is deceitful. Take your pen and underline the word deceitful. It's deceitful. It's deceitful above. It's above what? Above what, folks? All things. Then what is the most deceptive thing in the world? Now you know there's a lot of things that will deceive you in life. But there's something that will deceive you more than anything else. And you know what that is? That's your own heart. It will deceive you more than anything will. It's deceptive about everything in the whole world. You've got to keep checking that heart. Now, take your Bible and turn to the book of Genesis and turn to Genesis chapter 6 and look at verse 5. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. What do you meditate upon? What do you think about? Turn to Genesis chapter 6 and look at verse 5. And uh, look at Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. Both passages. Look at Genesis chapter 6. And then verse 5. And it says, And God saw that the wicked of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. Now, turn to Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8 and look at verse 21. Now, what's about to happen on the earth, folks? What's about to happen in your Bible in Genesis chapter 6, 7, 8, and 9? What's about to happen? What? No, 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 folks. Uh, you know what's going to happen? The flood. God is going to flood the whole world and He's going to wipe everything out. Now, Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet Savior. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his what? Youth. Then why did God flood the whole world? One of the reasons. Because the imagination of their heart was what? was evil from what? If I just would have known when I was nine, ten years old that I can't think evil and think evil and think evil and get away with it, i got to start thinking pure thoughts and clean thoughts and righteous thoughts because what's going to happen is pretty soon I'm going to start doing what I'm thinking. So I kept thinking that away. And then when I was about 14 years old, I said, now I can start doing some of the things I think about. So I started doing them about 14, 15, 16, 17. I was going like mad doing some of the things I was thinking about. 18, 19. What was the cause of my messed up life at 19 years old? Because I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. Oh, if God would have come along, somebody would have said to me, Nathan, you can't think those thoughts and get away with it. Somebody said, it doesn't matter what you think. It matters a deal, a great deal what you think. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what you do, you think in your heart, and you think in your heart, and think in your heart, and think in your heart, and then it gets wrong, and you said, nobody can see what I'm thinking about. You know why the lost art of meditation is lost today? Because people think, God cannot see what I'm thinking about right now at this very second. Nobody knows but me. If, if I took you and set you right there and 
your thoughts in your heart popped out. I wonder if I would like you then. Let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Take your Bible. So he flooded the earth for that purpose. Take your Bible and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. You meditate about something and you think about something and you uh, let it go through your mind and stay there a while. Then what will happen to you is pretty soon you'll be doing what you're thinking about. And uh, many Christians don't realize that, hey, you can't think on that line and think on that line and stay, uh, stay pure and right with God. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and pick up verse 5. 2 Corinthians 10 5. Casting down. Let's go back and get verse 4. 2 Corinthians 10 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing to the exalting itself against the knowledge of God and bringing unto captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So what is it doing? So here's a guy. You and I are in a day in the world where we go through life, just, just going through life. Here comes a thought. Blam. Bam, it's in there. Go over here. Blam, there's another thought. Go over here. Blam. We are bombarded with thoughts of the flesh, the devil, and the world constantly every day. And you're in the same boat I am. Amen. I lay down in bed at night, put my head on the pillow, and I get ready to go to sleep, and here comes that thought that I saw somewhere. I saw it. My eyes saw it. It went right there in my eyes. And I thought. I saw it, and I said, comes in. And I said, oh God, oh God, no, this ain't right, this ain't right. Lord, 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 this ain't right. But suppose a Christian has that thought, comes in, has that thought, and he doesn't get rid of it. He just meditates on it, meditates on it, meditates on it, meditates on it. He said, Preacher, why are you preaching this? Because my piano player, my piano player that was playing for me, that man, looked at this other woman in the church, sat along his wife and looked at her and looked at her and played the piano and smiled and looked at her and pretty soon he's messing around with her. He kept right on playing the piano. Messed around with her some more. Kept right on playing the piano. Messed around with her some more. Kept right on playing the piano. I went to him and says, Brother, that ain't right what you're doing. Blam! Once he knew the preacher knew, it changed the whole story. You see what I'm saying? He just kept looking at me. Kept looking and kept looking and kept looking. You got to do this. Lay down up bed at night and say, Oh God, wash that thought and mind out of my mind and get rid of it. And oh God, take it away. Bob Jones Sr. said this. He said, You can't prevent a bird from flying over your head, but you can keep the bird from building a nest. And I got a real picture on that one. <laughs> Here's this lady out there, and here comes the bird, and the bird comes along, and she sees the bird, and the bird comes down and builds a nest right there on top of her head. Now, I said to myself, what, what, is, what is meant by that? I said, I'll meditate on it. You can't keep the bird from flying over your head. No, you can't. You can't keep a thought from coming in. Boy, those thoughts come in every time you turn around, there'll be a thought, a thought, a thought, a thought, a thought. You can't keep a thought from coming in. The devil's going to put a thought there. But you don't have to keep on meditating upon the thought. You need to say, I'm fighting a good fight and I'm not going to think about that thing. I'm going to meditate in God's book and I'm not going to 
think on that thing anymore. I'm not going to think about it. And you've got to fight a good fight. It says, casting down every imagination and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. God does want you to think a certain way. The lost art of meditation. Take your Bible and turn to Psalms. Turn to Psalms 119 and look at verse 11. Psalms 119 and look at verse 11. There's a lost art of meditation. And it's because God's people are meditating on everything else instead of meditating in His book. Psalms 119 verse 11 says, Thy word, thy word have I hid in my what? Your what? Your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. Do you know why a Christian doesn't meditate on the book? And he doesn't take the book and meditate upon it? Because he doesn't memorize it. Now I'm going to ask you, and I want you to be honest this evening. How many of you memorized a verse of scripture last week? Raise your hand. Last week you you memorized a verse of scripture. One, two, three, four. Five. How many of you memorized a verse of scripture uh, two weeks ago? All right, a few more, a few more. How many of you memorized a verse of scripture this month? Okay, a few. There you go, a few more. Now, don't raise your hand. Don't don't, don't raise your hand on this one. How many of you haven't memorized a verse of scripture? One week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks, ten weeks. Has it been a long, long time for you since you memorized a verse of Scripture? Then how can you meditate in God's book if you don't memorize a verse of Scripture? It's a lost art. If you don't memorize a verse of Scripture, it's lost with you as a Christian. You cannot meditate in God's book if you don't read the Bible. How many of you, don't raise your hand, but how many of you would raise your hand in your heart and say, Preacher, I've never read the Bible from cover to cover. I've never read it from Genesis to Revelation. My whole Christian life, and I've read it. Now, don't raise your hand. But if you raise your hand in your heart, and you've never read that book from cover to cover, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get to glory and find out that you never, never, never meditated upon God's book. Why? Because you never read it. You never memorized it. You can't if you don't. Take your Bible and turn to Malachi chapter 3. Turn to Malachi chapter 3. Turn to the book of Malachi. The lost art of meditation. I preached this message in my own church three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, I preached the same message in my church. And it surprised me of how many of my people didn't have never finished reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I was surprised. I asked them to raise their hand. I'm not going to ask you to do that. I don't want to be surprised. I don't want to be surprised. I'm going to hope by the grace of God every one of you have read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you read it every week and every night and you meditate upon it. I pray to God my message is just for one or two people. I pray to God that you are one that meditates on God's book. Turn to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. If you're there in Malachi chapter 3, say amen. Verse 16. 
Then they that feared the Lord spake often one of another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. So God is up in heaven, and God is listening. And God is looking down, and he's doing what? He said, uh, sp- uh, feared them. He's talking about the people down here. That spoke often one to another. And they were talking back and forth to each other, and they're talking back and forth, and they're saying, do you know what I found in the Bible? Do you know what I found in the Bible? you ever seen this in the Bible? Well, what about this in the Bible? What do you think of that in the Bible? What do you think of the Lord over there? What do you think God meant right there? And like the sign says, questions about God. They're all in that book. And then what God do? God looked down, and he said, uh, I'm going to write a book. Ah, those two guys, that guy and that guy, and here they are. Uh, his name is so-and-so, and his name is so-and-so, and I'm writing them down in my book of remembrance. And they're down there talking about my book, meditating upon my book, and reading my book. And those two guys are down there talking about my book and about me, and I'm getting my book of remembrance. Do you know what the blessings of a Christian meditating in God's book? He ends up talking to somebody else about it. How many of you, now don't raise your hand, but how many of you this week took some passage of Scripture and talk to some other Christian about the passage of Scripture that you got this week from God's book. No, don't raise your hand. I'm just appealing to your conscience. Now, not giving them your own thought, not giving your own meditation, but just what it says in God's book. Now, take your Bible a minute and turn to a few more verses. Uh, Turn to the book of Jeremiah and turn to Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 14. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 4 and look at verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 14. And it says, O Jerusalem, uh, O Jerusalem, wash thy heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall vain thoughts, take your pen and underline, vain, vain thoughts. Now, uh, Vain thoughts lodge uh, within thee. Now take your pen and underline, Wash thy what? Heart. Wash thy heart. The only way to meditate in God's book is to take and wash your heart so you can meditate in God's book because you get your heart plumb full of other things. Now, again, take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And turn to Matthew chapter 6 and look at verse 21. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21 says, uh, let's read verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moss and rust to is corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moss nor rust is corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. Now take your pen and a line, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You know what you do as a Christian? You've got to lay your treasures up in heaven. You've got to put your treasures in God's book. Because then there will be your heart. And then you can start meditating upon it and talking about it. And God's book will be a book of meditation for you in your heart. Every eye closed and every head bowed. Every eye closed and every head bowed. Now, I don't know the Christian I preach to tonight. I don't know uh, that I may just be preaching to one person. I don't know. Maybe. But that one person, if God would just give me that one person that is not meditating in God's book, just that one, they're meditating on everything else but. They're thinking about it, their hearts upon everything else but. With every eye closed and every head bowed, I, I do believe that I've preached a message God wants me to preach tonight. But I don't know for sure until I ask you a question. Maybe with absolutely no one looking around. Brother Martin, please don't look around. But just you in your heart right now when you say, Preacher, 
I'm the one that's not meditating in God's book. I'm the one. And I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray that God would give me what it takes to start meditating in his book again. I used to, but I'm not anymore. And I want you to pray for me. Would, that, would you raise your hand? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. I have several of you. I have several of you right here this evening. Now, Christian, I, I want you to go home. I want you to go home. And I want you to make a vow to the Lord and say, Lord, from now on, I'm going to have your book as my meditation. And I'm going to start reading it. And Lord, I'm going to start memorizing it. And Lord, I'm going to start talking about it. Because when you use something, it becomes part of you. You get engrafted to it. So every one of you that raised your hand, I want you to go home. And I want you to open up your Bible and say, Lord, I'm going to mark every chapter that I've read. And I want you to put a mark by it. I want you to write the word read once. Read twice. Read three times. Till you have read the Bible several times. You say, Preacher, can't I ever stop? No. You don't want to ever stop reading the Bible. Keep right on reading it. And keep right on meditating upon it. Because it will be you successful or not in God's sight. Now maybe there's some of you here tonight and you meditate in the Bible. You, you, you memorize verses. and You read your Bible. But it's not in your heart. It's not in your heart. It's in your head. It's not in your heart. And, you, and you, if you, had, you haven't got it down there to where it's something that you love. Now, I, I'm sure I'm not talking about every Christian here, and I may be just talking about a very few of you. And it's not something you love. You need to say, Now, Lord, help me go back to that place where I have a love for your word again. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I preach this message to the best way I know how. I put it upon the heart of your people that they would take it to heart, Father. And that they would uh, go back to that place where every golden opportunity that they have, every uh, moment, that spare moment that they have, uh, maybe a lunchtime, maybe a time uh, before work, a time after work. Lord, I pray that you give them that time to where they can sit down. Lord, help them to make time where they can sit down and start meditating upon your word again. Please, Father, give them that opportunity, Lord. Please do it in their hearts and minds and souls. Lord, I trust you for it. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake. Amen. Brother Martin, you come on. There's been a major problem with the Word of God. And you know that has been the problem. Uh, we stand sing a verse or two of an imitation song. God has... Dialed your number tonight. You need to do something about it. Determine in your heart. I will, I will, I will. And go to the Word of God. Live in the Word of God. Saturate yourself with the Word of God. Reading the Word of God is good. But the next step and the thing that must be done, you must meditate upon what you read. It's not just a matter to read through and through and through. And then boast to the world how much I have read the Bible. But read it, read it, read it. And then think, 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 think. Meditate on what God has put across your path at that time. There's been a weakness now and something needs tended to. You come as we sing just a couple of verses of song. 94, a little bit of singing here. Give you time to do something with the message. God wants you here. You step out and come as we sing. Would you come? Come on. Come, come right now. Three ninety-four.
Now, I don't know about you, but uh, there's some things I do, and I do because of God alone knows what's out ahead. And you know, sometimes you're doing well, and uh, you're thinking well, and things are fine, your health is good. The time shall come whenever you may not be thinking quite as well, things may not be going as well. And if your mind is loaded with the Word of God, it'll get you through. And if uh, something needs to come out or does come out when you don't even realize what's going on due to anesthetic, Alzheimer's, anything, uh, you know what you want? You want loaded up with the Word of God so that the right thing comes out. I like what uh, happened to some of the old time preachers and the thing that was on their mind when push come to shove and they didn't even know what they was doing, automatically they gave an invitation. Automatically they quoted a verse of scripture. You know why I want to load down with the Word of God? Because, hey, as time marches on, I want the right thing to come out. Every now and then God gives you a major blessing. And one of my major blessings in life came after I had surgery. And all I can remember is being in recovery and nurse coming up and taking my blood pressure and I said you saved and she looked at me and walked away five minutes later or ten however long it was another nurse came up and said uh, took my blood pressure I said you saved <laughs> and uh, she looked at me and walked away third person around coming around was a male nurse <laughs> you go try this guy <laughs> I said are you saved he looked at me I said I said are you saved <laughs> I put it on him. Oh, I forgot who you were. <laughs> you know what that was? It's a major blessing. I didn't know what I was doing. That's what was in there. And that's why you want to read the Word of God, because sometime you'll be that way. Sometime, you know, old age could catch you. You won't realize what you're saying. And you want to, you want to be flooded, soaked, saturated with the Word of God. So the Word of God comes out. Or sometime you may be uh, in a situation where you're not sure it's critical health-wise. And you know, the Word of God is so effective that it can give great peace, which in effect is a major plus in all ways, including physically for your heart. You don't go wrong. And so for you to take tonight's message... And I think you ought to start with Psalm 19, verse 14, where we start tonight. You need to have it memorized. That ought to be your passion. That ought to be your desire and your goal. Oh God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You need to start there. You need to just soak yourself with it. And think of it. And think of it. And think of it. And because it's a lost art, it does not need to be a lost art for you. You've got the same Holy Spirit Nathan Bemis has, anybody else has. And he'll bring him back. You put him in, and he'll bring him back. You'll lay on the bed, and he'll bring you one back. Uh, critical times, he knows the verse, he knows where it's at, you've read it. He'll bring it right back to your remembrance. He promises to do that. Now you go for it, and you meditate in the Word of God. And let's be the type of people that desire beyond anything else the meditation of my heart, my heart. That's day and night, wherever. The meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You've never heard a message like this, and it was kind of a teaching, preaching message. But I'm sure it's just the way God wanted it, just when God wanted it. And I'm sure we need it like anybody else. And let's do something with it. Thank God for it. All right. Thank you for coming our way tonight. And I appreciate Brother Kipp's uh, part of his church gang coming down. They never hurt us. They always help things out. They bring good spirit in. And that's all we've ever asked anybody to do is bring good spirit. And uh, so the Lord's been good to us. Each one's been around. Trish is around somewhere or other. And uh, maybe Trish's sister. Uh, anyhow, uh, that's... That's my guess. That's my conjecture. Somebody says, I haven't seen that gal. And I said, oh, that's Trisha's sister. So I either said it right or not. Oh, yeah, I think maybe it is. Well, you're appreciated tonight. Come back tomorrow night, and we've got all day Sunday, so that's four more shots.
and Lord's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. And only the Lord knows what you need. And perhaps tomorrow night will be just the very message you need. Look for you. 7 o'clock is the starting time. And again, thank you for coming our way. Let's bow our heads and uh, close out our service with a word of prayer. And be careful as you leave. Watch your children, please, best that you can. And uh, exit carefully, slowly, at the road as well as from the parking lot. Frank Troyan. Amen. You're dismissed. Stick around and get a blessing. Be a blessing. And come again tomorrow night.